How's everyone going guys? Cody guys, back again, drop here another video. Right guys, um, I was on the Victoria Derbyshire program this morning on BBC2 at 10 o'clock. Um, I was talking about um, the importance of family ties being maintained whilst in prison um, on the back of the Lord Farmer report, right? Now, for me, it's something very close to my heart because having been in prison a couple of times, right? I've seen the effects it's had on my family, uh, emotionally, psychologically, and not to mention financially, because it's very expensive to support somebody in prison over the course of weeks, months, and even years. Um, so yeah, it, it's something very close to my heart. Now, the importance of it, I mean, maintaining family ties, can, in my opinion, honestly, it can be the difference between life and death. Um, when you're when you're in prison and stuff, we all do this macho thing of yeah, prison doesn't bother us and this that and the other, right? But the fact is, right, at every at each point in your prison sentence, there'll be a time, right? Might not happen straight away, might happen several times, might happen a lot, might happen on a daily basis, right? Prison will bring you to your knees, right? Long sustained periods of bang up, right? You start to dwell on things in prison. Any problems you've got are magnified by a thousand. Whether that's mental health problems, um, suicidal thoughts, debt. Uh, your family on the outside, the helplessness of the situation, the frustration of not being able to get out of your cell and ring your loved one, um, things like that. It boils over into anger, frustration, and then people kick off and stuff, right? Because little things are big things, big things are mountains, and mountains can blow your head off in prison. Um, because like I say, it's just that's the effect of prison. But prison has a domino effect, and the, the prisoners' families go... Um, unrecognized in a lot of it now prisoners families go to visits and stuff and they're treated with the same contempt that prisoners are treated with and prisoners of family prisoners families sorry are not guilty of anything all prisoners families are guilty of guys supporting a loved one right and the thing is people are not always in prison in the areas they're from right so because of financial restraints and stuff like that people can't always travel from Newcastle to Manchester Manchester to Newcastle Manchester to London Manchester to Wales or wherever to go and visit a loved one because it's an extremely extremely costly thing to do like I say you're sending money in via a postal order on a weekly monthly basis right you attending visits right some people uh, some people go drive so it's petrol costs or they get the train and then they might have to stay in accommodation all for a visit or an extended two hour visit a week right it's ridiculous <clears throat> Skype should be installed in prisons right I know it's currently being trialed in Northern Ireland but the thing is what annoys me within the prison system um, is the Ministry of Justice don't listen to us firstly because we have a lot of good ideas me and other prison reformers and prisoners families um, about what should happen and stuff and like I say we're not we're not selfish we're not biased we're actually trying to improve the prison system for everybody involved prison officers prisoners and also the rehabilitation side um, reduce reoffending reduce prison numbers which then save the taxpayer money and reduces violent incidents within prison so it would be a win-win for all involved but the ministry of justice guys seem to be a law unto themselves they do what they want to do um, they batten down the hatches there's many negative stories coming out of the prison system um, it's gaining momentum like now on the back of this Lord Farmer report the prison officers uh, association have come out prison governors associations come out prisoners families prisoners um, like everybody like MPs are coming out in support um, I think we're gaining momentum this the prison system guys as it is is simply a powder keg right and like I believe that the importance of these visits and, and phone calls and stuff right are key I think it will reduce in part uh, violent incidents within prison which would then reflect well on the Ministry of Justice but the Ministry of Justice seemed to the banning smoking and stuff which is going to cause issues and stuff if, if you ban something in prison it just means it'll still get in it goes underground and the price goes up times five times ten um, the Ministry of Justice in my opinion honestly are clueless right when you speak about prison reform how about speaking to the people in it that it affects prisoners prison officers prisoners families see what they want to get out of the prison system see what they want to get out of the time of prison for me prison should be a place of reform and rehabilitation so that you leave prison in a better place than when you went in with the opportunity and the, the to better yourself to gain employment to get a sense of self-worth and pay tax back into the system um, me and many people passionate about the prison reform and prisoners families and stuff that are speaking out on social media doing interviews and stuff um, I think we've, we've all got a very very important voice no one's bigger than the issue the issue is prison reform and like I say we're trying to better the prison system for everybody not just prisoners prison officers 
prisoners, um, probation, decreasing prison numbers, saving the taxpayer money and reduced violent incidents. So it's win-win. I, I personally think I've talked sense in that regard. Um, I'm not, I don't have all the answers, obviously, I, I just have ideas, but my ideas I believe are valid and so are many of the other people that, that interact with me on social media when it comes to prisons and stuff. Now, like I say, they're talking about Skype and stuff, how fantastic would it be, right, for, for a man or a woman, because there's obviously female prisoners, to see their, to see their child on a Skype video, like, like showing the dad a, a picture of something they've drawn in school or they've painted or something in school or the first day at school where they're standing there in the uniform and stuff right i don't have kids personally but i tell you like the the boost and the morale boost it would be for prisoners would, would be through the roof it's beyond words it's priceless it, it's pivotal it, it's huge it's really really huge you can't put a price on the importance of maintaining family ties now we live in 20 uh, 2017 guys right the advancements in technology this could easily be rolled out by the Ministry of Justice. I also believe that prisoners should receive incoming calls because a lot of prisoners' families have um, free minutes on the phone or they have free evening and weekend calls on the landline. Um, and I believe that because the thing is, within each cell that I've ever been in, there's been a phone socket, right? So it still goes through the PIN system um, and it's still recorded. So there's no breach of security there in any, in any which way. Um, and like I say, the fact that you're able to, to see your loved one on the screen and stuff like that, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great initiative. And I think that the, the thing is what bothers me is the, there's never consistency when these things happen. You can't say, oh, cat B's can get it, cat C and cat D, but not cat A, because there's no consistency and stuff. Put it in every prison, right? So, some people are saying dangle the carrot. If, you, if you're enhanced, like enhanced means you've been well behaved for three months, right? And you've stayed clear of any adjudications or nickings, right? That you can have that. Right. But then all prisoners, in my opinion, should get it. But I understand the fact of if you if you if there's no reward for good behavior or bad behavior, there's no incentive to behave, is there? So I understand that argument completely. Um, but like I say, these the Skype, um, this Skype idea, do, do I think it's a fantastic idea? Absolutely. Do I think it'll take place? No, um, because I think the Ministry of Justice, they don't seem to interact with us. Right. The prison system is a full is a full on powder keg, right? The fuse was lit in a long time ago, and in my opinion, it's not if, but simply when it's going to erupt into violence, right? Um, the smoking ban's coming into practice in the next month or two. Um, some prisons are already have already put it in place, and other prisons are going to, right? So you've got prisons that are locked in the cells for long periods of time, um, depending on what category of prison you're in and the regime of your prison. Um, there's a possibility you could be locked up for 23 hours a day. Um, where you get out for 45 minutes to an hour to go in the exercise yard, you come in, you try and jump on the phone, and then the prison officers are screaming back to your door and stuff. Um, it's not good. And like I say, families don't always live in the area that their loved one's in prison, or the prisoner might be in a prison that's far away from home. So to have that connection, to be able to see your loved one, to be able to see your children on a live link, um, on, on a video like, like Skype, I think it's a fantastic, fantastic initiative. I think that it would break down frustrations and anger within the prison system. I think you'd see a reduce, uh, a reduction, sorry, in violent, uh, violent offences within prison. It's not going to mask everything. I'm not stupid, right? I know that, that there's a lot of people in prison issue, prison with a lot of mental health issues and things like that, and a lot of anger. But being able to see their family um, on, on Skype and stuff, I think it's a fantastic initiative. As long as the security of the prison is still intact and the integrity and everything, that that's fantastic. Um, but I definitely think it's something that needs to be rolled out. But I think that the key is consistency. If it, I'd love to work with the Ministry of Justice to, to going forward and give my ideas and stuff. Because like I say, me and my prison reform people that I interact with have got a hell of a lot of great, fantastic ideas, which would see a reduction in violent offences, would reduce reoffending, um, which would reflect on the Ministry of Justice, decrease prison numbers, save the taxpayer money. And the prisoner would also be able to keep connection with his family and stuff, which is fantastic. Um, because currently in the prison system, like example, I work seven days a week, guys, for £11.25 a week, right? Now, then they take a pound off you for your telly, right? So if you're not getting money sent in, because obviously money's tight and stuff, we're, we're in a recession, austerity is affecting everybody, prisons, even, even prisons are affected, right? So austerity is like... It's, it's crippling people financially and supporting somebody in prison is a very expensive do. So the fact that Skype being installed 
right? The fact of prisoners should be able to ring into their to their loved ones in prison. Like I say, say three numbers from your loved ones are able to ring you on the PIM system, which keep which doesn't breach security, keeps the family tie, isn't expensive. Because like I say, say that when I was getting eleven pounds twenty five a week, right, for working seven days, right? If I put that phone on that that money on credit, right, and I'm ringing a mobile because not everybody has landlines, right? It's gone instantly. It's gone. You can have it. You can lose. You can spend it within a night, and then you've got to wait a week because if your family can't afford to send you money in, this is all you've got. So there's two. There's two options in my opinion. You either pay prisoners um, minimum wage, right, in the prison system, which I, I think is a great idea. Obviously, I know it'll never happen, but I live in hope. Or you let prisoners' families three three numbers on your pin. For those that don't know, in prison, prison you have a what you call a pin system. Um, and so three numbers could be cleared to give you a call up till I don't know, say 10 o'clock at night. Each phone, every phone, every cell in the prison system should have a phone within the cell. Not all cells do, guys. I know that people are going to say, yeah, they do. No, they don't. I got a phone on my last stretch because I was a cleaner um, and I put it into the socket in my wall and the calls recorded. And like I say, the integrity of the prison is kept intact as are my family ties, which are more important to me than anything. Um, but it's very, very expensive, guys, to, to ring from prison outwards because it's like ringing on a payphone. Um, and I think, I don't know how much on average, I think it's about 30p a minute or something to ring a mobile or something. And to landline, obviously, is a lot cheaper and stuff. But prisoners' families should be able to ring in. If not, give prisoners minimum wage within prison so that they, have, they can have a sense of self-worth before they leave prison. Give them skills, give them training, give them education. So when they leave, they're in a better place than when they went in. What they should do, if you work minimum wage within prison, they should put X amount away each week into a savings account. So when you leave prison, you've got this money with you. And like I say, you're able to continue with your life with these skills and training that you might have acquired over your sentence um, so that you could potentially break the cycle of crime because you get a job, you get a sense of self-worth, you pay tax back into the system. You don't re-enter the prison system, which reduces reoffending, and I think it's a fantastic initiative but like I say the government seem to they, they batten down the hatches they don't seem to interact with prisoners and prisoners families prisoners families shouldn't be be treated with contempt um, in the last week or so there's been a lot of tweets that people are going to prison um, with on visits and stuff right with open like tall can like sandals right and they're being turned away Right. And I think it's ridiculous. Right. The, the, the Ministry of Justice are talking about maintaining family ties, but then knocking people back because they might have a plunging neckline where the cleavage is showing or um, they're wearing open toe sandals. Right. I think it's ridiculous. Um, you cannot put a price and you cannot put it. I cannot stress enough how important it is to keep family ties whilst you're in prison. Like I say, for me personally, um, one instance, I was very, very down. I was, I was borderline suicidal thoughts. I was in a really, really dark place. Um, I thought I'm not going to get out of prison. This is my life now. I was telling, I was pushing my family away. Look, forget about me and stuff like that. Um, and they freaked out and stuff like that. And I, I rang my mum, and um, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. And I and it perked me up, and I, it dragged me out of that dark place in that moment um, where it could have been so so much different if I didn't have that um, family connection on the outside. Um, so for me, the, the, the importance is massive, absolutely massive. Um, you've got people in prison with self-harm and stuff, these suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. And the thing is as well, within prison, within the last uh, week or so, um, the National Office of Statistics released figures that um, 26,643 violent incidents have taken place in prison. That's a record high, up 20% on the year before. Um, and then you've got self-harm incidents, 40,414 incidents, right, in a 12-month period. Now, they're both record highs. Now, every time there's a, if you read in the media, there's, there's been a violent incident at a prison, the prisoners' families automatically think it's their loved one. Now, it doesn't matter how big and how bad the loved one of their theirs is, but the fact is they panic and they worry. A mother's love, you, you, I'm six foot four, 20 stone guy. My mum feared for me while I was inside because prisons are very violent, lawless, places and stuff like that. Long sustained periods of bang up has a detrimental effect on your mental health. And having this um, this Skype um, thing at your fingertips, I think is fantastic. I think the phone calls, I think you should be able to receive phone calls incoming. And I think the, I think the Ministry of Justice need to get with the times. This isn't the dark ages, right? Not much has changed since the Strange Ways riot back in 1990. Right, sanitation was introduced and stuff like that, which is fantastic. And prisoners have now got TVs, right? But 
um, and they suffered. They give 10 years extra on top of their sentence to make the prison system better for us. Um, but the fact is, prison system, the prison system as it is, does not work. Um, reform and rehabilitation is a made-up word. So the Justice Secretary David Liddington can wear a suit, feel important, and get him paid in excess of £100,000 a year. Um, for me, if you're talking about prison reform, speak to prisoners. Speak to prisoners' families, because at the end of the day, it's them that's affected. It's them that you want to rehabilitate. It's them that you want to. This. It's them that you want to like rehabilitate so it makes absolute sense across the board right guys i'm going to leave this video here please drop your your, your comments please like please subscribe and please share speak to you all soon guys bye